adage, without labor, nothing prospers, cannot be diminished because a nation's pursuit of prosperity will remain an illusion without the contributions of workers. Put differently, workers everywhere are the ones who fire the engine of the economy. They are the implementers of government policies and executors of private sector missions. Owing to these perilous roles, May 1 of each year is dedicated to celebrate the contributions of workers across the globe. But beyond rolling out the drums every May day, regard for dignity of labor and remuneration of workers in most private and public sectors have remained an issue of serious concern. These avalanches of challenges have, to a large extent, weakened the morale of workers. However, to improve the well-being, self-confidence, and commitment of its workforce, employers' workers' relationships must be enhanced where both parties must accord regards to each other and see themselves as partners in progress for sustainable industrial harmony. Workers through their unions must also be realistic in their demands, even as the government must be sincere in its labor-related policies and terms during negotiations. So, on Panorama Today, coming to you live from the Lagos Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority, we will beam our such light on the plight of the Nigerian worker and find ways to improve employers' workers' relationship for national productivity. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. I am Adeola Komiakere. Welcome to Panorama. Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamu says plans are on the way to convert the only water resources institute in the country to a degree awarding institution. The minister stated this when he inaugurated projects at the Water Resources Institute Kaduna. Achari Maxwell reports. First May is meant to be a public holiday for workers, but the Minister of Water Resources is busy on the field inaugurating projects at the Water Resources Institute in Kaduna. Projects inaugurated include hostel accommodation facilities, research centers and lecture theater to improve capacity and research development in the water sector. The minister's entourage also inspected some locally made facilities fabricated by the institute where he expressed satisfaction. On the plan by the federal government to upgrade the institute to a university, the minister says work is in progress. It involves quite a number of institutions, uh, the Ministry of Education, National Universities Commission, uh, maybe getting the presidency also. And then there has to be a bill and it has to go to the Ministry of Justice and then before it goes to the National Assembly, we need to interact also with the National Assembly. It's a long process, but the process has started uh, more than a year ago. But uh, I hope we can push it as far as we can go to a point of no return. We've done whatever required. So the facilities are done. We've gone to the NUC, we've talked with them, and uh, I think it is moving on fine. Suleiman Adamu reiterates his commitment to create an enabling environment to make the institute realize its full potentials in capacity development on contemporary issues to address emerging challenges in the water sector. Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Reformation of Nigerian Correctional Service through public-private partnership has started yielding results with the inauguration of an ICT hub at the Kirikiri Maximum Custodial Center, Apapa, Lagos, giving hope of a brighter future to inmates. Joe Popola reports that a new zonal headquarters for Zone A of the Nigerian Correctional Service was also inaugurated. Empowerment of inmates through education remains a cardinal objective of the reformation of Nigerian correctional system. Round of applause. The inauguration of this ICT hub at the Kirikiri Medium Custodial Center by the representative of the Minister of Interior, 
Rauf Arek Beshola is expected to create opportunity for the inmates to acquire skills for self-reliance. The ICT hub equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and 5G internet enabled is a public-private partnership which should be replicated in other custodial centers. It's worthy to mention that the National Open University is also in collaboration in this. So that you are behind bars does not mean that you cannot better yourself in educational field. People here can acquire ma uh, bachelor's, master's degrees and other qualifications. Another major milestone in the rebrand project is this ultra-modern headquarters situated in Ikoyi expected to boost the morale of officers. The Controller General of Nigerian Correctional Service, Aliru Nababa, expressed appreciation to the federal government for the improved funding of the service, which has translated into remarkable improvements in infrastructure and welfare of inmates and personnel. This trajectory is a clear manifestation of the golden footprints of the federal government under President Mahmoud Buhari, GCFR, in the Nigerian Correctional Service. The expectation of stakeholders is that the positive trajectory will be sustained for the benefit of Nigerians. In Lagos, Joel Mukwola, NC News. The Nigerian Police Force National Cyber Crime Center has arrested a 21-year-old male, an indigent of Abua local government area in River State, for creating a fraudulent platform, AMC Stock Experts, to defraud unsuspecting members of the global cyber community. In a statement, Force Public Relations Officer Olumuiwa Dejobi said the arrest of the suspect followed reports from the Hungarian police in 2022, while efforts are being intensified to apprehend other members of the syndicate, the Inspector General of Police urged the entire cyber community and internet users to be mindful of unverified investment platforms and schemes. To an average Lagosian, Workers Day, no matter the challenges, afford them the opportunity to bond, celebrate, and forge the way forward. Annie Daniels, who was at the Mobology Johnson Arena on Econ Lagos, venue of this year's Workers' Day celebration, says Lagosians are full of hope for a better future. Nigerian Workers' Day celebrating themselves in a special way. The theme for this year's celebration is workers' rights and socioeconomic justice. Nothing stops the government from approving car loans, housing loans, and some others for workers. But this is what will make them happy. We are putting all our demands, most especially as we have heard from our leaders today, before the government at the federal and the state level, that workers' rights and workers' welfare must be put at the top priority. If you expect Lagosians to live without making the best of the day, then you are mistaken. You have been coming here over the past 10 years. And it won't be wrong. Every... Joining me in the studio to further discuss ways to improve for Nigerian workers and also strengthen the Employers Workers Industrial Relations is the chairperson of the Nigerian Labor Congress NLC Lagos State Chapter, Agnes Olufumi Layasesi. Good to have you join us on Panorama. Thank you, madam. Okay, now I want to say congratulations for being uh, at the helm of affairs in NLC Lagos State. Now, how would you describe the mood of the Nigerian workers? Uh, well, it's a mixed uh, feelings. Um, uh, this year, the Nigerian workers, they came out to celebrate the Workers' Day because um, they, they, they have a, a year of hope. And as we are going into a transition to another government, mm -hmm. um, we are hopeful that the new administration will carry along um, the workers' leadership in all the sectors, because workers are in every sector. Every policies of government, we should be a part of the decision. 
Okay. As a critical stakeholder. Okay. Now, the theme for this year's uh, Workers' Day is um, rights and socioeconomic uh, justice. How apt is this theme? Yes, it's justly apt for this time. Workers' rights and socioeconomic um, justice. How has the workers been, you know, justly affected with the socioeconomic policies on ground? Workers are always at the receiving end of every policies, either good or bad. If the policies are good, workers are good to go for those policies. If those policies are bad, workers will feel the brunt of those policies because whatever policies that come out and we are not part of it, uh, definitely it will have its toll on workers and also Nigerians generally. Mm -hmm. One of those uh, policies is the economic reality on ground now. Um, most of the policies that are anti-workers policies, mm -hmm. definitely is not going to be a, 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 the one that will put smiles in the faces of workers. But being that as it may, um, this administration that is, you know, passing out, let us give kudos to them. At least they have done they some, some, of yes, the some of the demands. And also those ones that they have not met, we should not uh, put the, so much blame on them. You cannot run faster than your strength can take you. Uh, to their own best of their ability, they have done their bit, and they are passing the button on. So to the next administration that is taking the button from this present government, we admonish that they should carry along the workers' uh, leadership in all their, you know, um, dealings. And so for it to be, you know, um, an all-inclusive government, not okay. only for, you know, particular uh, sector or uh, place, but for everybody. All right. Now, so uh, globally, there is uh, one agitation of workers or uh, the other against um, employers resulting in industrial strike. How can this frosty relationship uh, be managed? And is a strike the only way to, you know, get your demands met? Um, all over the world, you can see that that instrument of strike is the last instrument that we have for the workers to exercise their civil rights. So, currently as we are talking, even in advanced country, you see the workers, they also come up in protest rallies, in strike actions. In United Kingdom currently, in America, you see workers, you know, staging uh, protests and uh, going on strike against their employers because they want uh, a living wage. Uh, so it's not out of place for us also in this part of the world. We are, all belong, all the workers' uh, uh, bodies, the labor centers across the globe. We belong to a larger body, international labor organizations, organizations. and the ITUC Global. So, and we compare notes, we compare situations, and we have a labor law globally, the world over. So we are being allowed to use that instrument. But it should be uh, the last of the instrument to be on, used. on the engagement. Okay. We start with um, dialogue, collective bargaining, and when all those ones fail, that is when we use the last resource uh, weapon. Okay. All have. right, now, so also it is known that our labor unions, um, you know, the world over, have other means of generating funds and even, you know, support our civil servants. How is your union ameliorating the sufferings of your members and um, how supportive actually is your union to the members? Um, thank you. Um, some of the affiliate unions under Nigeria Labor Congress NSC has over 50 affiliate unions affiliated to it. Mm -hmm. Some of the unions, um, rather than for them to be fortified, you understand, to be strong, government has brought about some policies that has made them, you know, to uh, not to be, you know, um, strong again, mm -hmm. like in the banking sector, like in the aviation sector, in some other sectors 
where government came up with that wicked policies of um, outsourcing and casualization. Before we used to have people working to a retirement age and then gratuity, pension and all sorts will be part of their you know, working engagement. But once during the administration of um, President Obasanjo and they came up with that casualization and outsourcing of workers, many of all this uh, workforce have been replaced with outsourced workers. And most of these outsourcing companies have been, you know, owned by the same people who phased out the uh, permanent workers in employment. So for this, and most of these outsourcing companies, they fail to realize that um, we need to uh, um, unionize the workers. So we are still having a running battle in that area. But for the sectors where we have the workforce not being um, outsourced or casualized, we have the strength and we have the unity. And those ones are strong. Okay. Uh, where they have also collectively, they have some resources mm -hmm. that they use to fortify their union. Okay, financially. Um, all right, Ceci, um, apart from uh, workers' remuneration and improving a working condition, um, we talked on the casualization. How can this practice be stopped? Well, um, that practice, we, the stakeholders need to, you know, have a job job. We need to discuss, we need to talk, we need to negotiate, because these people that are being given um, uh, a casualized job, they are not earning a decent wage. And, you know, it's like their rights are being trampled upon. They, they don't have medicals attached to their work. And recently, like, uh, a, one of the banking institutions said about when they're about to get to a certain level, like 15 years and above, mm -hmm. where they could earn a retirement benefit, they will be laid off. Their job will be stopped abruptly without doing nothing, without even being discussed, uh, without even you know having discussed with them okay. about. So they will stop it and then they will give them a peanut. Okay. They will walk like an elephant and they will yes. end like an ant. Yes. Okay, we are hopeful that this incoming administration will um, take note of um, all you have in your We are very, very hopeful. Yes. We are very hopeful. Thank you. Um, Agnes Sessi, NLC uh, Chairman, Lagos State Chapter 4. Uh, your thoughts with us on Thank the Thank you. Um, there is so much hope that uh, we are putting on ground for the incoming administration, and uh, we believe in his uh, ability and so what he's done deliver. when he yes. was a uh, governor of Lagos State. I mm -hmm. want to rest on that. So his that track is, record will speak for yes, him. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You're still watching Panorama reaching you live from the Lagos Network Center of the NCA. Let's take a short break. More news when we return. The chairperson, Nigerian St. Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Arewa, says Egypt had opened their borders for Nigerians. The chairperson says the development was as a result of intervention of President Muhammadu Buhari and President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. She, however, states that a stringent condition was attached to the border opening, the conditions that was not disclosed to the public. To this end, the process of moving Nigerians from Sudan border to Aswan for airlift is in progress. In another development, the federal government has evacuated more than 1,000 Nigerians from Khartoum and are on their way to Port of Sudan. Some of the students on transit told NTA that they were moving in a convoy of 27 buses with each bus carrying 50 to 55 Nigerians, stating that no one was left behind. The government is looking at the possibility of using Port Sudan to ship Nigerians to Jeddah in South Africa, to Jeddah in South Af in Saudi Arabia, and fly them home. 
to 12, 2023. It will feature defending champions Bayasa Queens, Rivers Angels, and Delta Queens from Group A, while Group B has FC Robo, Edo Queens, and Confluence Queens. The winner of the tournament will represent the country at the regional CAF Women Champions League. To basketball now, Lagos, Nigeria will host the final phase of the Africa pre-qualifying tournament for the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Nigeria beat Tigers are in Group A alongside Senegal, Mali, and Uganda for a place at the FIBA World Cup next year. The tournament will take place from August 12th to 20, 2023. In tennis, Nigeria's sole representative at the International Tennis Federation and Confederation of Africa on the 14th tournament in the Osage returned to the country early hours of Tuesday after winning laurels for the country in Angola. 14-year-old in the got three medals two gold medals in the girls' doubles with her partner from Zimbabwe and one silver medal in the singles event. Indeed, he was ranked 29 in Africa, going into the junior circuit, and will be hoping to climb up the ladder after the next junior tennis rankings is released. In boxing, amateur boxers in different weight categories were on duty again after two months' break. It was the 126th edition of the Lagos Boxing Show, held at the Molade Okoye Thomas Indoor Sports Hall of the Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos. Some experts at the event spoke on the need to give Nigerian coaches more international exposure. We are planning it in the Federation now. I want to make a seminar for the all Nigerian coaches. With sports update, Gift George, NTA News. And that wraps up Panorama on the network service of ANTA from Lagos. I am Adeola Komiakere. Enjoy the rest of your day.